Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In Acts chapter 5, the religious leaders of Jerusalem were discussing among themselves uh, what to do about the apostles of Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 5, the apostles were caring for the poor, healing the sick, and proclaiming Jesus raised from the dead. And to those who wanted to silence the words and actions of the apostles, a man named Gamaliel urged caution. He said, if these men, the apostles, if these men have been sent by God, you will not be able to stop them. You will only find yourself fighting against God. You'll only find yourself opposing God. That was his warning to them. Of course, that's not a good place to be, fighting against God, opposing God. The Old Testament prophet Jonah is a good example of that idea, that you don't want to be the person opposing God. You don't want to be the person fighting against God. You remember Jonah. God called him to go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. That was Jonah's calling from God. And Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. So he got on a boat and he traveled the opposite direction, away from Nineveh, away from God's call. And that's how he eventually found himself in the belly of a great fish for three days and three nights. It's because he was fighting against God. It's because he was opposed to God and God's call. And that's not where you want to be, fighting against God. But opposing God, fighting against him, is a part of our sinful nature, isn't it? As Christians, uh, as a Christian, there's a big part of you that delights in doing God's will and praise God for that. The world is a kinder place because of it. It truly is. But our sinful nature remains with us throughout this life. And opposing God, fighting against him, is a part of our sinful nature. And Jonah is not alone in that, having a part of him, that, a part of himself that's opposed to God. It's something that we all share. The Apostle Peter is another example of that, uh, our sinful nature, sometimes opposing God and fighting him. Remember how Jesus said that he was going to Jerusalem to offer up his life there, and Peter says, no, Lord, this shall never happen to you. See, Peter's opposing God. He's rebuking Jesus. And Jesus says to him, get thee behind me, Satan. It's another example of that kind of thing. Humans opposing God. The rich young man that we read about in the Gospels, he would be another example of this idea. Humans opposing God. Jesus said to the rich young man, sell everything that you have and give it to the poor and come follow me. And the rich man walked away from Jesus, thinking, I have other ideas for myself and my money, Jesus, and they don't include you. He's another example of how people are opposed to God and God's will and they fight against it. Opposing God is a part of our sinful nature. God speaks the truth in love to us in his word, the Bible, and we are tempted to be opposed to him, to not believe all that the Bible teaches. There's things in there that we don't like, that we want to be opposed to and fight against. It may be a fellow Christian that is speaking the truth in love to you and you may not want to hear what they have to say. And really, the, the, the person you're opposing is God. It may be our own Christian conscience inside of us that's speaking the truth in love to us, reminding us of the way God wants us to go, and we resist, are opposed, and really the thing that we're resisting is God. Like Jonah, like Peter, like the rich young man, we can find ourselves opposed to God, fighting against him. It's part of our nature. And that's not a good place to be. But the good news for us is found in the mercy and love and compassion and kindness of our God. Jonah experienced that mercy and love and compassion and kindness of God 
in the belly of the great fish, Jonah repented. That is, he expressed sorrow over his sin and trust in God for his mercy. And God forgave Jonah and showed him mercy, and the great fish vomited Jonah onto dry land. And then, look at, what, look at what it says in our Old Testament reading for today. After Jonah repented and was forgiven, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go. God forgave Jonah and gave him a second chance. A new start. A new day. A renewed call to go to Nineveh. And this time Jonah went. And then it was blessed by, jo uh, by Jonah's obedience and by his faithfulness. The city of Nineveh repented and was spared God's wrath. Jonah was a fool. He repented. And God showed him mercy and still had a place for him and a purpose for him. And Jonah, now obedient to God, was a blessing to all those people around him, the whole city of Nineveh. And the same is true for us. The mercy and compassion of God that Jonah received, we have received also. Have you ever found yourself opposing God, fighting him? Repent, trust in his mercy and his love. And like with Jonah, God forgives you again today and gives you a second chance, or maybe it's a third chance that you need, or a fourth chance, or whatever number of chances that you're on that you need. Today, God gives you another new start, another new day, another renewed call to be his child. And God's mercy is that big. Like with Jonah, he still has a place for you and a purpose for you so that you can be a blessing to the people around you. He still has a place for you and a purpose for you, and he will for eternity. God's mercy is that great, big enough to give all of us a new start each day because of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice for our sins on the cross. Jesus never opposed his Heavenly Father. He never fought against his Father's will. He wrestled with temptation in the wilderness. He feels the heavy burden of the cross already in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he reached out in prayer to his Heavenly Father. But I don't think we would ever want to say that he opposed his Heavenly Father or that he fought against his Heavenly Father. Instead, he's the sinless Son of God, the Lamb without spot or blemish or stain. And it's a willing and faithful Jesus that goes to the cross and lays down his perfect life for us and for our sins. And all those times that we have fought against God, we are forgiven through the blood of Jesus. And the burden of the whole world's sin is placed on him. All the fighting against God that you see in our world, all the opposing God that you see, he paid that debt with his cross and his tomb. And then Jesus rose victoriously on Easter Sunday, and the resurrected Jesus wants the whole world to repent and to be forgiven by his blood. That's why he died for all, so that all could be forgiven by their repentance. That's why in his ministry Jesus preached, repent, and believe the good news in town after town after town, because he wants the whole world to repent and believe. That's why he called the twelve to do the same thing and sent them out to preach repentance and faith. And that's the message of his church still today. Repentance and faith. Trust in God and his mercy. Stop opposing God. That's not where you want to be. Repent and believe the good news of forgiveness and reconciliation with God through the blood of Christ. And God has a place for you and a purpose for you for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that passes all our understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.